Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to explore SQL and how by using different statements inside a calculated field, we can add more functionality to our applications. Let's take a look. In this use case, we're going to look at an example of a case statement and how by using that statement, we can generate results on the fly so that we don't have to manually input the data ourselves. So what exactly is a case statement? It goes through conditions and returns a value when the first condition is met, like using an if-then-else statement. If the condition is true, it will stop reading and return the result. If no conditions are met, it returns a value in the else clause. Let me give you a quick live example. So let's just say we add a new student here, Sally Smith, and let's just give Sally a failing test score. So we'll say 55%, and if I click on add, you will see failed, and a grade of F. I can quickly edit that and let's just say that Sally did in fact pass the test. We'll give her 95%, click on update and now you will see a passing result and a grade of A. The benefit of using a case statement as I mentioned is that you can generate these results on the fly without you having to manually input the data. The drawback is that you're not going to see this information inside your table. So if you do need the data to be in your table as well, you're going to have to create a field up here and maybe using a drop down, you can select if the result is passed or failed, and you can also have a drop down to select the grade. But the nice thing about these statements is that you can see this information on the fly without you having to manually input the data. So let's go into Caspio and let me show you how to create these statements. Here's my live example, the one that I just demoed. And let's edit the one that doesn't have the case statement yet. So we're going to click on Edit. And let's navigate all the way to the results page. And if I click on preview now, all you're going to be able to see is the name and also the test score. So now how do we create those two additional columns to have a test result and also the grade? Let's go back into Caspio. And the first thing you want to do is insert a calculated field. I'm going to move this down a little bit and give it a label of test result. And inside this window is where you want to inject your case statement. So let me go ahead and write this out. Case when and then insert your test score as a parameter. So if the test score is greater than or equal to, and in most cases it's going to be 60%, then return passed. So what the case statement is doing here is if the test score is greater than or equal to 60%, return passed. Else, return failed. And then close your case statement. Hopefully this makes sense. Basically, if the test score is greater than or equal to 60%, return passed. Anything else, return failed. If I click on preview now, you will see how every student now has a failing or passing test result based on the figure that you see in this column. And now let's learn how we can assign a grade depending on the test score. So back inside Caspio, we're going to insert one more calculated field. I'll give this a label of test grade. And for the second case statement, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it because it's a bit of a longer case statement, but I will explain each line. You can see that in this statement, we have more than one condition. So if the test score is greater than or equal to 90%, return A. If it's greater than 80% and less than 89%, return B. Then we have C, D, and if none of these conditions are met, return F. Let's hit preview again. And now you can see how we generate the grade based on the test score. If you'd like to learn more about SQL, I recommend W3Schools. Here you can learn a lot about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and if you look down here, you're going to be able to see Learn SQL. And in the example that we just looked at, we learned all about the case statement. So if you click on this, this should now look familiar to you. Case when the first condition is met, return this result. We have more than one condition. Anything else, return something else. And then you close your case statement. What's nice about W3Schools is you can actually try a lot of these tutorials yourself in real time. So if you click on Try It Yourself, Run SQL, you're going to be able to see the results. And if you modify anything in the statement, you'll be able to see how your modification affects the results. The next statement that we're going to look at is a very simple select statement. 
which basically looks at information from a specific table. So let's go to Caspio. Let's see how we can use a select statement in a different use case. In this example, I'm going to show you the select statement and how by combining it with count, we can look at a different table that's associated with that student and be able to tell how many tests that student has taken. Just like you see in this column here, we can associate how many tests were taken by each student by using a select statement to pull information from a different table that's associated to that unique ID. Let me go to Caspio and explain that in this use case, we have two different tables. We have the table of students and we have a table of tests. It's a one-to-many relationship where students are linked to tests using a unique ID. So you'll see if I open up the students table, each student has a unique ID. If I open up the test table, each test is linked to that specific student. And even just by looking at this, you can see that four tests are linked to ID number one and two tests are linked to ID number two. So if I go back to my live example, you can see how John has four tests and Sally Hughes has two tests. So let me show you this powerful capability, how you can actually use the calculated field and the select statement combined with count to grab the total number of tests from a related table. So back inside Caspio, we're going to use our example that we were working on. Let's click next a few times. And once again, we're going to insert a calculated field. I'll move that down and we'll call this test taken. And now let me show you how you can use the select statement. So you type out select and by combining it with count in parentheses, what we want is to count the field student ID from the table of tests. Now I'm going to go back to this screen here and just grab my table name. That way I don't make a mistake in the spelling. Paste that. Then you want to insert the where clause where student ID equals to target underscore, and then you're going to insert the student ID field from the dropdown as a parameter. And that's all you have to do. Now, the reason why we have to add target dot and then the field name is because you're trying to target the current data source to grab the field from the student's table. So if I go back a few steps, I need to grab the student ID from this table and the SQL statement needs to know that. That's why we need to add target so it knows that it's looking inside this table to grab the student ID. Because at the beginning of my statement, as you can see, we're grabbing the student ID from the test table. But we want that student ID to equal the student ID from the related table. Hence why we have to use target dot. It's just a declaration in SQL. And now when you click on preview, you can see what the SQL is doing. John Davis has four tests taken and Sally Hughes has two. So this is a very powerful feature to be able to look at information from a related table and as long as that table is linked via some kind of a common value or unique field from a previous table or a parent table, you can use the select statement to count the number of records that are related to that unique ID. The SQL statements are very powerful. You don't have to use count. You can also use sum. You can use average. There are many SQL statements you can explore and inject them into the calculated field for more powerful capabilities. I recommend that you take a few moments just to try it yourself, play around with it. You'll see that it's not overly difficult. If you have questions on SQL, you can contact their support team as well. For additional videos and articles, please visit our knowledge base at howto.caspio.com. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can see the latest tips and tricks on how to use Caspio. Thanks for watching and have a great day.